One of the greatest evils of all time is that of hypocrisy. The Pharisees that Jesus faced at his time were such paradigmatic hypocrites that up until today, the two words Pharisee and hypocrite are synonymous. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, Salve Maria, and welcome to this Sunday's Gospel Commentary. The Gospel for this um, 22nd Sunday of Ordinary Time brings us a, a violent condemnation of the Pharisees, pronounced by the divine lips of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today's Gospel is presented to us by St. Mark in chapter 7. And here St. Mark tells us that some of the Pharisees and scribes had gathered around Jesus. So this leads us to believe that the Pharisees and scribes were attracted by his wisdom and wanted to find out more about him. But the first thing they noticed was that the disciples of Jesus did not wash their hands according to the ritual ceremonies and customs prescribed at the time before their meals. And this led the Pharisees to reject Jesus. Let's read the beginning. Um, let's read the, and some excerpts of today's Gospel reading. When the Pharisees, with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem, gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. So the Pharisees and scribes questioned him, Why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? So here, brothers and sisters, the disciples ate with uncleaned, unwashed hands. But, brothers and sisters, before we see the reason the Pharisees brought this up, let's try to understand what, these, what this accusation is all about. Um, as it might seem to us at first sight, the question here of unwashed hands is not one of hygiene at all. The word the Pharisees used against Jesus was koinos, koinos which is translated as unclean. Um, it literally means common thing or profane thing, the opposite of a sacred thing set apart set apart for the worship of God. The, Pharisee had, the Pharisees had established several laws of ritual purification for the Jewish people that were not contained in the law of Moses, but were developed by them over time. The, the original precepts um, given by Moses um, were to help the Jews separate themselves from the pagans. However, the Pharisees complicated matters by adding so many laws and outward practices that they became unbearable. When the Pharisees said that the disciples of Jesus ate with unclean hands, um, they were referring to these practices of outward purification, um, in such a way that any contact with anything that was considered unclean required ablutions and baths of purification. Many of these were arbitrary and some outright, outright ridiculous. But, brothers and sisters, what is important here to note is to note the attitude of the Pharisees. So, the first attitude of the Pharisees here uh, with regards to Jesus was that of admiration. Yes, the Pharisees actually had some form of admiration for Jesus and and for his disciples. I say this because it would have been impossible for them not to have noticed something extraordinary was taking place before their eyes. Jesus and his disciples must have fascinated the Pharisees. And this is the immediate reaction of any, any one of us um, when we come into contact with something or someone that is holier or greater than us. We are in admiration. This first reaction of the Pharisees is immediately followed by a second one, comparison. 
the Pharisees start to compare themselves. This is almost an infallible rule in human relationships. Our admiration for something greater than us is always followed by comparison. So, for example, we might ask ourselves, what about me? Would I do better than him? Brothers and sisters, this reaction is almost instinctive and therefore is not yet a sin. But it could lead to a sin if we do not reject this instinct immediately. So the third reaction of the Pharisees is envy. Yes, envy. And envy is a sin. When a person is faced with someone better or greater than him, and if he doesn't take care, he will begin to envy the other. The right attitude here, brothers and sisters, um, of the Pharisees would have been, well, he is greater, he is more intelligent or holier than me. I thank God for having favored him in this way. This would be an act of virtue, and God would um, reward us for this act of virtue. But if we do not make a habit of recognizing the superiority in others and appreciating it, we will, yes, inevitably fall into the horrendous sin of envy or even of jealousy. Envy, brothers and sisters, is a satanic sin. Unlike other sins um, that bring some form of benefit or pleasure, envy brings no benefit at all. It is purely a spiritual sin. And it was what led Lucifer to revolt against God and be thrown into hell. This was what led the Pharisees to close their eyes to the grandeur and majesty of God and the obvious working of the Holy Spirit among the disciples of Jesus. They, the Pharisees immediately brought up an entirely secondary issue because they could not find anything else to attack Jesus and his disciples who were, who were exemplary in virtue. This is a very typical sign of spiritual envy. The person who commits this sin will criticize secondary and holy kind of irrelevant, irrelevant things in those who are holier than him. All the saints had to suffer this. If today a saint was to appear in Catholic circles, I think the attitude of some or may, 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 may be many Catholics would be like that of the Pharisees. Admiration at first, yes. Followed by comparison, yes. Followed by envy. Finally, they would start criticizing the saint for something trivial. Uh, for example, ah, oh, if he's really so holy, why doesn't he pay attention to what's, to what's going on around him? Or something silly like that. Behind these insignificant criticisms, there is a hidden pride and envy that is gravely sinful. Common attitudes today, like despising or criticizing superiors, um, church leaders, civil leaders, teachers, etc., are born from this envy. Of course, um, authorities um, and even some of our religious authorities may have, may have given us reason for disapproval. But when the criticism is not moved by pure love for God, it is always moved by envy. An easy signal that we are moved by envy is when we criticize something that doesn't involve sin. So, for example, why does she dress so richly? Uh, isn't she being pretentious? Why does everyone respect him so much? Isn't he so exaggerated in everything he does? So, almost always, brothers and sisters, What's at the bottom of this criticism is nothing else but envy. Jesus in today's gospel does not explain or refute the point of eating with unclean hands that the Pharisees raised up against the disciples, but he attacks their entire way of being. He calls them hypocrites. And then our Lord quotes from Holy Scripture against them. He quotes from the very important prophecy of Isaiah when he goes and he says, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And then our Lord says that this prophecy was fulfilled in them. It is interesting to note the context in which Isaiah gave the original prophecy 
which we find in chapter 29 of, the, of Isaiah of the Old Testament. Um, God was speaking through Isaiah of the Israelites for whom religion, the practice of religion, had become mere lip service without any authentic love for God. But the prophecy did not end there. God promised that he would intervene in the lives of the Israelites in such a wonderful way that they would truly acknowledge him as their Savior. The prophecy was about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. In quoting this first part of the prophecy, our Lord gave them to understand that the second part was realized in Jesus himself, who had come to reconcile man to God. The Lord Jesus then condemned the evil of hypocrisy, which um, deceives others with outward showing of holiness while hiding corruption and wickedness. Um, as, as he says, nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person, but the things that come out from within are what defile. It is not appearance that matters, brothers and sisters, but the soul. If the soul is in sin, outward appearances will not save that soul from the wrath of God. But a pure soul is pure in everything, and nothing that anyone can say or do will defile the interior purity of that soul, of that heart. Purity is above all in the heart, but it flows out in good works, in good actions. There are those who imagine, imagine that they can fool others and they can even maybe fool God with their outward show of holiness. Well, God is not deceived. Such actors will not have a happy ending to their show. On the day when Christ calls them to judgment, they will have not, and, and if they have not repented, they will be condemned to hell. Remember, brothers and sisters, not all those who say, Lord, Lord, will be saved. Today's gospel gives us a secret to holiness. Yes, a secret to holiness. How to become holy. How to become agreeable to God. And that secret lies in one word. Admiration. Admiration. If we sincerely admire the good that is in others, the holiness of the saints, of the ministers of God, uh, the virtue of our brethren, then we will be rewarded with graces to embrace holiness ourselves. But if we open our hearts to envy, God will close the channel of His graces. So let's ask our Blessed Mother Mary, who was filled all her life with admiration for the good and true and the beautiful, let's ask her to teach us to admire the good and to always avoid envy or hypocrisy. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Salve Maria, and a blessed Sunday to you all.